Lawrence, we've got a whacking signal here. Oh, blimey. Blimey, what have we got going on? Are you happy for me to investigate? Yeah, please do. Oh. It's looking, it's looking silvery. Derek, have you got the XRF there? Yeah. We know what it's made of. Oh my gosh, I've, I've never seen anything like oh, this. Right. What, 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 what reading are you getting? I'm getting YouTube. Like YouTube? What is that? I've not heard of that before. What's that say? Is that, that's not Roman, is it? What's it say? Presented to Time Team official um, for passing 100,000 subscribers. Thank you to all our YouTube subscribers for helping us to reach the Silver Award. Next up, gold. A million subscribers. Gold! Gold! <laughs>
such a beautiful place and I know it was a Shropshire site and I live in Shropshire and everyone knows that Shropshire is the most beautiful county in England so I'm slightly biased but it was amazing because in the middle of it was that incredible chapel and we went in on day two and that's the kind of thing that as an archaeologist you know you kind of live for that kind of thing when you see all these amazing hidden secrets kind of coming to the fore so I loved that site it was perfect. At the beginning of 2022, Matt Clark and I visited Higher Uppercott on Dartmoor in Devon to visit a collaborative project between the University of Plymouth and Dartmoor National Park Authority. Originally the brainchild of Professor Daniel Maudlin and Emma Stockley, the project uses state-of-the-art laser technology to scan this ancient medieval longhouse to help conserve its history and to enable people to take a virtual tour. Later in the year, Matt Clark and I visited the Market Hall in Plymouth, a fantastic community space, to see the 3D scans of Higher Uppercot projected onto a 360 immersive dome. It really was like you were at Higher Uppercot itself, and we'll be sharing more on this with you soon. Our flag of fame returned for another year, featuring the names of our Patreon supporters, without whom none of this would be possible. So, I'm just at the uh, flag for this year's Patreon, so we're going to read out a few names, see who's been supporting us. So, first of all, Richard Steddall, thank you very much. Ben S Smash. Kay Silkey, thank you Kay. You smashed it, Ben Smash. Rosie and Peter, thank you very much. We have got Aloha from H and M Zisco. Martin James Barfield, thank you Martin. Thank you, Carolyn Guy. We've got Melissa Matthews, Paul Edgington. So I'm looking for my mum's name. She's in here somewhere, unless she stops subscribing, in which case I'm blocking her. <laughs> I was really delighted when BBC Radio 4 approached me to make a series about things that have mattered or in some way impacted me, bits of material culture and that we decided to craft a series around fashion for radio, which might seem slightly sort of counterintuitive, mm. but the story of things that mean something to you, of the sorts of clothes that you wear, the things that you have in your wardrobe that have really sort of touched you in powerful ways are things which I think the stories behind them which um, could really, really convert well to sort of oral narrative. And so I've done a series of, of, of 10 um, very short um, pieces for Radio 4 and they can be downloaded as podcasts from, um, from the BBC. The series is called Torn. I absolutely have adored doing it and I hope to do more. In terms of my professional uh, other discovery, I think um, my, my best my best experience really in 2022 was um, being in Germany, um, working with residents of a small rural community, Schoenefeld in uh, Schleswig-Holstein, um, with the first time that members of the public in Germany have ever been able to sort of excavate within their own community to make discoveries about their own past. Um, it was amazing seeing the excitement of people as they made discoveries in their own gardens um, and they were also very very kind about my extraordinarily rudimentary German um, but what was so interesting was that people were so excited about what they were finding that actually the language barrier just disappeared. Um, my most memorable archaeology project of 2022 outside of Time Team uh, has to be digging at the Battle of Waterloo with Waterloo Uncovered, a charity that focuses on bringing military veterans and serving personnel to the battlefield for a programme of archaeological fieldwork combined with welfare support. Uh, there were a lot of thought-provoking finds this year uh, and we got to branch out across the battlefield to investigate geophysical anomalies, which was new to the project, which was very exciting. As a highlight this year actually goes back to um, a community project I've been involved in over actually over a good number of years now up in New Yorkshire. Uh, this being with a group, the community of builders, um, uh, lots of different people from, from the region who got all their own expertise in different areas. But they, this started off with the reconstruction of a uh, late Neolithic trackway and platform. And, and the current project, which has been going on now for a while, is the reconstruction of a late Neolithic house um, you know, on the visitor centre on Hatfield Moors. So I think those projects are great, partially because working with 
communities. As much as allows you to do the experimental archaeology, it also teaches you how much you don't know about many of these sorts of like ancient practices. The most memorable project of the last year that I've been involved in is actually being a link with Stuart Ainsworth. And back in February this year, myself and Stuart went out to Yorkshire and trialled a bit of new technology. So we've got a site where I work at Forestry England um, where we've got incredible archaeological remains, tons and tons of nationally significant monuments, but it's covered in trees and it's really hard to see them. The potential for more archaeology is very high. So we teamed up with Adam Stanford from Sumo and um, Aerial Cam and as well as um, and some, uh, some other providers. And we spent a day throwing some technology at it. And um, the results were really interesting, really valuable. But the real highlight was getting to see how Stuart's mind worked and his, his sort of observations of the larger landscape. It was a landscape study after all, but getting to see how Stuart read the landscape, interpreted things, perhaps how that conflicted with my interpretations as well. But there, there's a lot to be learned from that guy and it was a real treat. I think my most favourite project outside Time Team was something called Our Upland Commons Project, which I'm involved in. And I did a couple of great excavations on commons. The whole project is about bringing people and people with common rights um, together with their common land and getting them in touch with the land again. Um, and that includes the heritage. So we did a great excavation up on the Clee Hills. There were some ancient uh, coal pits there, really small ones, just locally dug. They weren't great big industrial excavations. They could be 100 years old. They could be 800 years old. And so we went up there and we excavated some of the spoil heaps, the amazing group of volunteers, really good fun, it was brilliant. And in September 2022, the team got back together to excavate a Knights Hospitaller Preceptory in Shropshire and an Anglo-Saxon cemetery in Norfolk. You can catch the Dig Watch coverage over on our Patreon channel and on YouTube, and the full episodes will be following soon, later this year. We found something really fascinating and interesting, which obviously I can't tell you about. And we think that one of the things we found is attached to the name of a particular person mm -hmm. um, who, in shorthand terms, we know as Mad Jack. Yeah. Min Mitten. Mitten. Mad Jack Mitten. Time Team returned to investigate the sarcophagus at Broughton Roman Villa, launching our new expedition crew. We're back in the Oxford landscape to take a look at the sarcophagus we identified during our last dig. And we've got two important questions to answer. And of course, Sir Tony Robinson has returned to film the Time Team specials. <coughs> and during 2022, there were some fantastic archeological discoveries. I think probably actually if I'd, if I'd been recording this a couple of weeks ago I'd have said something different but um, since the discovery of that Anglo-Saxon, rich Anglo-Saxon female uh, bed burial in Northamptonshire which hit the news just, just, well, just at the beginning of December 2022. I think of all of them actually it has to be the discovery of Ernest Shackleton's ship the Endurance. It's such a moment in history uh, but also such an iconic ship. So I think that sort of discovery really brings the imagination to life. One archaeological story that caught my eye in the news this year was the discovery of two lion bones in the middle of The Hague in the Netherlands uh, on a central square called the Buitenhof. Because um, obviously you don't really expect lion bones to be found in the Netherlands. Um, these were from the 14th century um, so after this discovery, um, they went into the archives and actually found that there was a zoo in the Bausenhof area um, in the 1340s and 1350s. So I really like where they kept lions. Um, so I really like the aspect of uh, archaeological discovery, uh, working together with historical research, so archival research, to present this story. My favourite archaeological discovery of the last year is one that was relatively recent, in November. And it's a site, I'm going to have to read it off a piece of paper because I don't speak Italian. It's San Cas Caschiano di Bagni. I think San Caschiano di Bagni. Um, and it's a really, really interesting site where they have found two dozen bronze statues 
um, at a Roman site. And it, it provides a really good interest, insight into how the Etruscans and the Roman Empire interacted at this time of history. Um, and the results, the artefacts are just beautiful. And the, the insight that we get, it's, it's a bathhouse effectively. And the, the archeological research has even identified that there may have been a blacksmith on site. So people coming to the bathhouse could commission their own artefact, could commission their own bronze offering. Or to, and um, the, well, it's not just statues, there's potentially, there's one, one item of a drawing which is almost described as a bronze X-ray. Um, almost demonstrating ailments in the body, but really, really interesting just insight. Uh, it, it, it waterlogged, obviously metal artifacts survive a lot better in generally, in general, but the buildings, the context of these these baths, the, the transition, the interactions between the Etruscans, of, which is where the land, which is where the, this, these features are found, and the Romans, just so many levels of insights. If, if you like shiny, beautiful things, it's the one for you. If you like learning about um, intercultural interaction, it's the one for you. If you like learning about uh, religion and, and gods and, um, and other things like that, it's the one for you. So I, in, in essence, it's got a little bit of everything and um, a really, really nice discovery. But there's so much to look forward to in 2023. things which are really exciting is the unexpected. Archaeology always brings out things which you don't expect. It's the surprise, it's the serendipity. So actually the thing I'm most excited about is the thing which I don't know what it is yet. What am I most excited about for 2023? Well, outside of time team, in, in the day job as it were, um, I'm really excited that at the University of Lincoln I'm going to be launching a new degree in archaeology at the university that will start in autumn 2023. So it's going to be a huge amount of work to get that going, but should be really exciting. It should give people a pipeline into professional archaeology. For 2023, I'm excited to hopefully go on some uh, nice uh, digging projects abroad. Um, and of course, I'm very excited to find out more about where we will go with the next Time Team digs. Um, I really like uh, the aspect of going to areas of the country that I may not have been before with new types of geology, new types of archaeology that I haven't dealt with before. Uh, and that way I just keep learning new things, which is very important to me. As well as Tony returning to film some new documentaries, we'll also be revisiting some classic Time Team specials here on YouTube. And if you'd like to play a more active role, please do join us over on Patreon and help us to develop new sites. There's so much to look forward to in 2023. We have the premieres of this year's digs. We'll be dropping in on exciting projects from the Time Team's friends and family. Thank you for watching. Please do press the like button, press the notification bell and do consider joining us over on our Patreon channel. And I look forward to seeing you very soon. Join Time Team on Patreon to access exclusive 3D models, masterclasses and behind the scenes insights.